He has the power to heal the sick. He has the power to change your circumstances. I want you to stand to your feet. And you know, sometimes we come on a Sunday morning, Monday to Saturday, we feel it's another Sunday. It's another worship Sunday. It's another word again. We get to see the worship team. But I want you this morning to have a heart, expectant heart to hear the word of God. Open your hearts. Open your ears because His word says, we're not only hearers of the word, but we get to do what the word of God says. Do you know this weekend, right up to last night, and this morning, the enemy tries so hard to attack me, to attack because the word this morning is on prophecy and prophecies. Is we get to hear the word of the Lord, we get to hear the word of God speak into our dry seasons. Amen. This morning I walk in and our lovely Janet and our team. They just greeted me by saying, the screen is not on. And I said, praise the Lord. The journey continues. So we don't have notes this morning, but I have sent out my slides on your phone. This is the day that you can open your phone if you can access PowerPoint. But I want you to know that God's power is more powerful than the slides up there. Even if I don't have notes or you don't get to see the same power that raised Jesus from the dead is right here. You have a need, you have something that you've been believing God to answer. The answer is found in His Word. In His Word. This is the book, the, the book of the law that is full of God's promises. I tell you what, it's, it's a miracle I'm standing here this morning. Yesterday, the whole day, this cough came back. Came back attacking me so bad. Last night, throughout the whole night, I couldn't sleep. Four in the morning, my husband got woken up. I got up with a fever. I had a headache and my cough would not stop. I had no voice. I said, honey, get up. Give me water. And I started revising my word because the word I'm speaking today is about speaking the word of God to the dry areas of your life. I started speaking God's word over my situation. I said, Jesus, I have... You are my healer. And I said, cough, go in the name of Jesus. I commanded the cough to go. I said, you have no room. You have no room in my body because I am prepared to deliver the word of the Lord. Do you know who believes that you are gifted with your mouth? You can speak forth God's promises in those situations. So I slept from 4.30 right up to 7.30 in the morning. I woke up. There was no cough. My sore throat had gone, completely gone. And it's only through the power of our confession, we have to confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. He is willing to heal us. He is willing to meet us at where we're at with our journey with God. This morning as you stand, bow your head as we bless the word this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you have the power to change things. You have the power to heal the sick. I pray this morning, Father God, that walls will come down. Face masks will come off, Lord, because your word is power. It is sharper than a two-edged sword, piercing through the bones and through the marrows. It exposes our deepest heart's desires, Lord. This morning, your word is available, Father God, for us, that we can go to your word before we go into another person. We can go to your word. We can go to you in prayer, Father God, because you are the one true God. You answer our prayers and you are always willing and available for us. Bless your word this morning. I pray that our hearts are open. Our ears are open, especially the the deep down in our hearts, the seed will get into our hearts and it will grow because we know God. As we walk into this morning, we had so many distractions. We had things going on in our mind. The enemy tried to really ruin this, the plan that you have for us. Lord Jesus, I pray the battlefield of our mind, that our minds will align to the things of God, that ourselves, our lives will align to the things of God. No weapons form against us shall prosper. We stand upon your word this morning. Bless our family. I pray especially for Apostle and Helen as they minister in Darwin, that your word will go forth, Father God, that people will be healed, people will receive your word and they will be set free. Bless our family in Jesus' name. Amen. 
You can take your seat. Do you know last Sunday, if you weren't here, Pastor Cardinia preached a powerful message. She ended our series on heaven and hell. And wow, what a wow word. As Talia mentioned, if you missed it, go onto our social media and watch that message. Do you know she spoke about heaven? We've heard so many things about heaven, but there was one thing that caught my attention of that message. When she said, heaven is beautiful, we've heard all the amazing stories about heaven. We read about it, we've been to funerals, we've been to the hospital, seeing a loved one getting ready to go to this amazing place. But this line, that was like a wake-up call for me. It was like a wow moment when she said, Heaven is not for everyone. Tell the person next to you, hey, heaven is not for everyone. But you know, you and me, we have a job to do. We can get ourselves ready for that place. And then when she mentioned it, I thought, oh my goodness, Lord, I had to search my heart, my mind and everything. Am I aligning to the things of the Lord? And then he reminded me with the scripture in Matthew 7, 21 to 23, and I'll read it. Do you know why we can't all go to heaven? It's in the word of God. It says that not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only the one who does the will of the Father in heaven. Verse 22. Many will say to me on that day, Lord... Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name deliver out demons. And in your name perform many miracles. Do you know what Jesus said? Then I would tell them plainly, I never know you. Away from me, evil doors. Do you know you can pray? I can stand here and preach. You can lead the worship you can lead a connect group for many years. You can be a preacher and have a massive church. But what does the Lord say? Away from me because I don't know you. There's one thing he wants you and me to do. Do the will of the Father. His word is full of his commands. Do not murder. Do not lie. Do not commit sin. For the book of the law. All he's asking is for you and me to do the will of the Father. Do you know the time you accepted Jesus, you've given your heart to the Lord, the journey gets so excited, and then we forget there is more to just accepting Jesus. You get to go to your next step. You get to hear the word every Sunday. You get invited to connect groups. You get invited to be part of this amazing team in Hosanna. There's more than just coming on a Sunday and hear the word. It will say that we must put into practice what we hear every Sunday. Amen. And the second thing here is like, um, I was also reminded then at that very moment, Psalms 139, 23 to 24. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know the anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me to the way everlasting. So important daily. Psalms 139. We search ourselves. Do a nice check up of yourself. Tell of yourself sometimes. Hey, how are we going? Are we still sitting down there? It's time to come up. It's time to rise up. It's time to go to the next level. We can't just sit at the same level every day, every Sunday. Because if I stay in the same place, I don't know if you're so dry. It would be boring just to come and just to sit and to hear. Go back to our normal day today, Monday to Saturday. Now, take me to, oh, that's heaven. Heaven is amazing, but we've got to prepare ourselves. Prepare for when that day comes. June series today is the first Sunday of June. And it's on School of the Prophets. So this whole month, there'll be different pastors and leaders coming up and share. And today was meant to be um, apostle preaching. So, yeah, I'm here to bring the word for you. Thanks to the husband for nominating me. 
session one, if you had your calendar, you would have seen it's got prophets, prophecies, watches, seers, cord, porn, and spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts is another big topic. And I thought I will bring an overview of what spiritual gift and where prophecy comes from. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help one another. And in verse 1, now about the gifts of the spirits, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. So that is why we get to learn about prophecies and prophets, spiritual gifts, and all the other topics that are coming up. Very important. One thing that I want to encourage our church, I know some of us, we might have new people that have never heard the teaching on spiritual gifts. It's one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that is available to every one of the church so that we can encourage one another, we can edify one another, so we can uplift our friends and new people that have just become knowing the Lord and their journey. And one of the things that's so important is that we need to identify our spiritual gifts. I don't know if you remember two years back, Apostle have given out a list, an assessment where you go through, you get to select what area where you can serve in the church. So it's important that after we're saved, we get into the Christian walk, we get to know more about God, that we get to identify our spiritual gift. When you know what your spiritual gift is, it's important that you work towards developing your spiritual gift. It says um, praying for the sick. Prophecy, you might have the gift of encouraging people. Their list goes on. There's so many in there we get to learn. But that's another discussion for another sermon. And the last part that I like to encourage us is so important that we don't just develop our spiritual gift. We identify, but it's so important that we get to use our spiritual gift. If you have the gift, God has anointed you and is giving you a gift through your time with God, and you identify where that area of giving, of um, spiritual gift for you, it is important that we get to use that. The next one, I want to explain about the purpose of prophecy. What is prophecy? 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1, and then verse 3. It says here, Follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. That is the purpose of prophecy, encouraging, comforting, and to strengthen the body of Christ. Why is prophecy so important? 1 Corinthians 14, 4-5, I'll read. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves. What that means when we start speaking in tongues, you are actually um, bearing yourself up. You're edifying yourself. You're getting into the mood of prayer. You might get up in the morning, what we normally do with the kids when we drive to school, to start speaking in tongues. You start speaking the language of heaven. That is for yourself, is to edify yourself. And then it goes, um, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. You would have seen if you've been attending church for a long time, Apostle will get up here, maybe hosting or preaching, and in the middle of the preaching, he'll stop and call up someone. That's through the gifting that he has, a gift of a prophet. He will have a word for someone in the church. He might have a word for the, for the whole congregation. That is what prophecy is. And it says here, I would like every one of you to speak in tongues, but I'd rather have you prophesy. The one who prophesies is greater than the one who speaks in tongues, unless someone interprets, so that the church may be edified. Amen? Getting quiet here, eh? Ephesians 4, 11 to 13, it further explains what prophecy is about and the gifts of the Spirit. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. So Christ himself gave Apostles, we have the apostles, the prophets or the prophetess, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip 
his people for work of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. So that is how important and why prophecy is so important. We will get to know more about it as more preachers come through the month of June. We get to dive into deep, into prophecies. This is just an overview and introductions. And then this is one of the favorite ones in the New Testament, Acts chapter 2, 17 to 18. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. He didn't say there that only just the pastors or the leaders or the connect group leaders. So we have no excuse to say that we cannot prophesy or we cannot pray to heal the sick. It's not just a healing ministry. It's not just the pastors that get to preach or share God's word. Acts 2, it makes it very clear that I will pour my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. Amen. We are all called. We have a call, and the spiritual gift of prophecy is available to all of us. If you go through the, the Bible in Acts and Corinthians, in the New Testament, and also in the Old Testament, there are so many teachings about prophecies and how we can speak the Word of God over our situation. So that's just a simple introduction into prophets and prophecies. And now I want you to get ready to hear the Word of God. I haven't even started God placed a word in my heart when I was asked to preach on this Sunday. I was immediately thought of the story that is well known and it's being preached everywhere. And you probably know the story. Ezekiel 37, the valley of the dry bones. Amen. So because you don't see the slides, there's nothing up here, but you've got it in your um, Facebook notes. Ezekiel 37 verse 4 is where the message this morning is from. And I've titled this message, Dry Bones, Hear the Word of the Lord. I had to put that into practice when I felt sick last night. I said, no way, no weapons form against me. I am not going to allow this to come into my life. And in my family, in my home, or in the car, my husband and the kids know this about me. As soon as I hear a talk that's a bit negative or a bit doubt or down or negative or like, oh, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can get that. I say, in the name of Jesus, none of that talk in this house, none of that negative talk in here. Yes, you believe you can have it. You can have that job. You can get that. You can get those grades in the, in the name of Jesus. Sitting in a car in the morning, that's our everyday routine with the kids. I work my work is busy, but guess what? Every morning is our morning with the kids in the car. I get to take them to school, pray with them, speak the word of God over them. Every single morning since they were primary school, they're in college. It is so important, parents, be the biggest cheerleader for your kids. Speak God's word over them. The time that they're facing different challenges in life. Us parents, we get to cheer them up in life. We get to speak the word of God and pray over them and believe the best for them. The next thing I thought, because I've been studying, if you've been studying the book of Ezekiel 37, you will know the deep meaning behind it and understand what it's all about. And I started, I don't have any points for this message. But um, the points, the, some of the lessons I've learned in studying this um, book of Ezekiel was that the first one, we've got to be alert. We've heard about the armor of God, put on the full armor of God, because the devil is attracted to dry places. He likes it when it's dry, because you know why? Because there's no life there. And sometimes it's hard for us to speak to dry places, because it's a dead. It's not living. It's just sitting there. Thanks, Shirley. And it's so important 
that we know that we need to stay with God. We put on the full armor of God because the enemy is attracted to you when you, they know that you're feeling down. You're feeling empty. You're feeling far from God. You feel that you're in here, but you're empty. Do you know God say that sometimes we might be sitting here thinking that we have everything. We have the best clothes on, the best shoes. We've got the latest handbag or this and that. But we're just skeleton, sitting empty, not filled with the Spirit. This morning and this word, God wants to speak the word into your situation. He wants to breathe the breath of life into dead situation. Amen. Second thing here was um, God doesn't want us to stay in the valley. Do you know the story of Ezekiel? God took him back and forth in the valley full of bones. He was going right around. And it, that reminds me of us sometimes. So the, the, the valleys of the dry bones represent the people of Israel. But in today's, this is Hosanna Church. Sometimes we can just sit in a valley. We stay in the valley. We entertain our thoughts of, I don't want to turn up to Connect Group. I'm okay today. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to hear another sermon. I'm fine. And then you sit in the valley. You start camping in the valley. You're calling all your girlfriends. It's just all sit in this corner. Let's not go to the women's group. Let's just sit over here. Let's go on Facebook. Post your status up there. I want everyone to know that I'm upset. You know, we go through the valley. The people of Israel that represent them, we sit there, and then the enemy, which is attracted to dry places, they start speaking to your mind. And then your mind is blind, and the thoughts start coming, and you start entertaining it. Young people, the enemy comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. We have to be alert about the scheming of the enemy. Amen? comes to steal your thoughts. You might be thinking, no, I'm all good. But sometime, look around to the people you are hanging around with. Do you have the right group of friends? Do you have the right group of people that you associate with? Because sometimes, if you're coming from here and you didn't used to gossip or say things about other people, the minute you start getting into that group, you start to hear the negative, run. Run to the other side. Run away from, from the negative thoughts. Don't stay in the valley. Don't just entertain that thought that comes to your mind. Number three, God can breathe life into dead situations of our lives. Dry bones can live. Tell the person next to you. Dry bones can live. Dry bones can live. Dry bones can live. Number five, prophecy and speak the name of Jesus over your situation. It is time to start declaring God's promises over your life. Stop talking about your problems. That's not going to fix everything. Start speaking his word over your situation. Don't have a job. Stop talking about you don't have a job. Get up, get out of your room and go on the computer and apply for a job. <laughs> You won't get the job if you just sit on your PlayStation, if you just sit in your room, don't come out of the room until the Wi-Fi is turned off. No, you've got to speak God's word over your life. Finance. How's our finance looking today, guys? Go onto your online banking. Oh, I can't order. I don't have enough food. I not enough money. You look at your bank account. You're in the valley again. You go back to the valley God, what happened to finance? You told me to give my tithes and our offering, but I don't have enough this week. Maybe I can't tithe this week. I'll wait for next month. Come next month and you're deep, deep down in the valley. Now you're sitting down. Now you're lying down in the valley. Now you're feeling depressed. You know, I should have given my tithe last week, but now we're up to three months and you're in deep, dangerous ground. Because you decided not, you don't want to honor God and his word. To put him first. Amen? Guys, the enemy is attracted to dry areas of your life. Be careful. 
You got to put on the full armor of God. You have to be alert to His scheme. He will come and destroy your mind. Your words, the power of your words. Be careful to what you say, because it gives life. Anything that comes out of your mouth, it comes from the heart. So be very careful with the way you will use our words. The last one, start telling yourself, start telling your mind to align to the things of God. Start aligning our mind and our hearts to the word of the Lord. A bit of a story about Prophet Elijah, Prophet Ezekiel. In the Bible, there's so many prophets you get to read. There's books and studies of Prophet Isaiah, Ezekiel. There's so many. But Ezekiel, he was 25 when he went into exile. He was taken captive together with the people of Israel by the Babylons. Any 25-year-old here? He started at 25. He was taken away. And then in the word of, um, in the study of Ezekiel, he was commissioned by God as a watchman at the wall and of the people of Israel. Ezekiel was 30 when he received his prophetic call, which is found in Ezekiel 2, verse 3. If you are 30 and you are still breathing, yes, you can lead a connect group. If you are young, you have all the energy to jump on TikTok. Here and there, you can use your gifting for the Lord. Have you heard of the Hokey Pokey song? You know, you put your white right hand leg in, in, out, in, out. Let me tell you, young people in our church, sometimes our lives are like that. You put one foot in and one foot out, in, out, in, out, turning all around. That is not what church is all about. That's not what church is all about. You don't put one foot in and one foot out when it comes the weekend. Oh, I want a little dance here and there. I want to stay all night till five in the morning. And then come Sunday, oh, I don't want to go to church. Ah, Wednesday's connect group, ah, I don't want to go. One foot in, one foot out. That's not church is all about. Church is about being on fire for God. When you're going through the valleys and being on fire for God, when you've got no money, you're still on fire for God. No, I don't want to go to church now. I don't want to talk to her. She took my money. (laughs) That is not what church is about. We need to go all in, all in with God. Go all in. The good, the bad, and the ugly, go all in. Because that is where God is. Go deep. Go deep into your relationship with God. None of this hokey pokey song, in, out, in, out. No. God's plan for you is bigger and better. Amen? And you know, towards the end of chapter 33 to 44, this is where the prophecies and the restoration of home came, hope came for Israel. And then I'll start our session. We're just starting. I'm just starting preaching now. Ezekiel 37, if you have your Bible, or you can refer to the notes, if you can see it. Verse 1, it goes something like this. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and he set me in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. Do you know the story of the dry bones represent the house of Israel, as I mentioned earlier? It represents the people of Hosanna. It represents the people of Forest Lake, of Red Banks and Goodna. It represents us. Do you know, and I thought, it's not so much about the dry bones that's got no life in it. It's about these bones. It's about us. It's about our mind, our eyes, our words, our thinking. Do you know we can be walking around, but we're dead? We can walk around, but we're just empty until you are filled with the Word of God. And then you start to hear your words change. The way you talk to people is a lot nicer. The way we think of other people is nice. You know, we can start preaching and we can start praying and declaring God's power over our family. You know, bones receiving new life, restored to a new spiritual life. 
Here is what Jesus said throughout the book of Ezekiel 37. Listen to the word of the Lord. I will cause breath to come into you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons and make flesh come upon you. I will cover you with skin, then I will put breath in you, and you will come to life. Verse 2 to 3, this is Ezekiel um, 2 to 3. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great army of bones on the floor of the valley. These are bones that were there dry, and he asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Guess who wrote the book of Ezekiel? Does anyone know who wrote the book of Ezekiel? It was Ezekiel. He wrote the book. But when God asked him, can these bones live? His answer was, I don't know. I was just at Market Square having bubble tea last night. I don't know if they live again. You know, sometime when I read that, that's just like us. We come on a Sunday morning, we get our coffee. Your connect group come up, how are you? How was your week thing? Everything's fine. Everything is amazing. But you go back home and you pick up the dry bones again, the dry pieces again. You are living and you're going through all these areas. But instead of telling the truth, you lied. You just said, I'm good. Even though you're not good. Do you know why you're not good? Yeah, you're not good. This is what the word of the Lord saying. Sorry. I like his honesty. He didn't know the answer when the Lord came. He was only 25. He was 30. A 30 year old thing. I don't know. I don't know if I can prophesy. What, what does that mean, Lord? Can these bones live? You alone know. Sometimes we think that God can, can't change our circumstances. We might think we can't come out, come out again. But his word is very clear. Speak the name of Jesus over those situations. Are you waiting for an approval for your new house? Nothing is impossible with God. Verse 4, then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Yeah, we just need to understand his word that he's speaking not only to the people of Israel back in 2,000 years ago. He's talking about us right now. No longer double-minded. You know, you say, okay, my friend is healed. And then you come on this side, oh, now she's going to die and look, leave the kids and the husband. She should have gone and do all this and that should have stayed healthy. You pray to God for healing. And then your next step, you change your mind again. God wants you to stay and go all in with God. And when you say and believe that God will heal your friend, God will change something in your life. And here is verse 5. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. Church of Hosanna, what a promise from our king. What a promise that we can hold on to today. As we start at June, it is winter. It's time we go into our blankets and we don't want to come out. It's too cold. It's too wet. I don't want to go to church. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I don't want to go to cleaning. It's just nice and warm here. God is saying, he, I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. He can restore the areas in our lives you know, we hold the key to speaking life into our situations. What areas of your life that you need this message this morning to speak life into it? Do you have friends that have not received Jesus, a loved one that have never heard about the gospel of Jesus? At the age of 25, Ezekiel, he was taken away from his family together with Israel because of their disobedience to the Lord. And at age 30, very young, and at, at age 52, that's when Ezekiel saw his last vision. We have so many years 
our days on this earth, we can use to glorify God. Amen? We come into close. Verse 6. It says here, I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. He will breathe life into your marriage. You know, some marriage this morning, you might need a bit of a wake it up, bones, get up. You know, God can revive your marriage again. Areas of your marriage, you might think it's just a normal, everyday. Look at the husband. Mm. Look at the wife. God wants to bring life into your marriage. He wants to restore your marriage. He wants to restore a relationship between husband and wives, children and parents. If you're here and your parents are all around, go and take them out for a nice coffee or a nice dinner with your mom or your dad. Make the most of your time with your parents, young people, because they are wise and they give you words of wisdom. They can pray and bring life over your situation. Verse 7, this is the amazing thing about this word. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise. Something amazing happened in verse 7. A rattling noise and the bones came together, bone to bone. Do you know the dry areas of our lives? We might have some dreams. Have you had dreams that you think you want to do this? You've got a business plan. You've got all these big dreams and visions and what you want to do in life. Immediately you fall into the valley and you say, I don't have the finance to finance my new business. But we've been talking about how massive and how big our God is, what he can do into your situation. He can breathe life into your situation again. He can turn things around for the good. You know, in Mark eleven twenty three to 24, as a story about being able to speak to the mountain, using our voice to speak life into our situation. Truly, I tell you, if anyone says to the mountain, go throw yourself to the sea and does not doubt in their hearts, but believes that what they say, it will happen, it will be done for them. So whatever words that you can speak over your situation, God then turned that around. There is power in the name of Jesus. And God says, speak to the mountain. Speak to the area of your life that needs to come alive, that needs to receive fresh revelation from God. Verse 8, I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was still no breath in them. You know, you might think, now I'm in with God. I've done the will of God. I've done this and I've done this Bible studies and that. I know all my scriptures. But deep down, we're still dead. We still don't have the spirit of the Lord. We don't know the fruits of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, gentleness. We're still walking around, but we still don't love one another. We still have that dry area of our life that we're still carrying hurts towards our parents, towards a family member for what has happened in the past. God can bring life into that situation. Verse 9. So he said, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath, from the four winds and breathe into these lanes that they may live. When God breathed into Adam in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, the breath of life he was breathing is breath, which became the spirit of the man. You know, he formed the man from the ground, and then he filled this man with his breath. Do you know you are filled with the breath of God? Use it. Use what God has given you, the gift he's given you to use for his glory. Amen. Breathe into whatever is dead. Because God can bring miracles. Verse 10, so I prophesy as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life, and they stood on their feet, a vast army. Isn't that amazing what God can do to your situation? The life will come into you, and you will come alive again. Amen. Stand to your feet. 
I want you to stand to your feet because on that last verse here it says, they came to life and they stood on their feet. We are going to the enemy's camp to take back what the Lord, what the enemy has taken from us. And as I read verse 11, then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our home is gone. We are cut off. Last verse 12, therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says, my people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up to them. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again. I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I am the Lord have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. Stand to your feet as I invite the worship team to come up. I want you to close your eyes this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to think about his word this morning. Start thinking about the things that has just really um, brought you down in an area that you think that you've been sitting and there is no answer, there is no way out. I want you to think deep and take in what the word we've heard this morning is the worship team. Sing, shout Jesus to the mountains. Yes, Lord, I pray this morning and we thank you for your word, God. Thank you that your word that changes us, it transforms our lives. This morning we're going to shout Jesus into the dry areas of our lives. We're going to shout Jesus to dead dreams, to dead hope, to hopeless situation, Father God, I pray. And I'm going to call this morning a very simple call. If you have never invited Jesus to your life, you have the opportunity to receive Jesus this morning. The second call I want to call, if you've been facing a battle, you've been going through the valley and you think there's no way out, the dry bones, we are calling the name of Jesus to bring life into your situation. This call is for you. We're going to shout Jesus to the mountains. We're going to call the name of Jesus. And if you're here and you hear the word, you respond to God. You respond to your word. Because there is areas in our lives that we've held on so, for so long. The dead areas in our lives that need to hear the word of the Lord. That needs to come alive in the name of Jesus. Yes. Shout Jesus.